2.2 million refugees have now fled Ukraine in just two weeks. The refugee crisis is the biggest since World War II. And to take a closer look at that situation, let's bring in Matthew Saltmarsh, the head of news and media for the UN Refugee Agency, the UNHCR. Matthew, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us on France 24. Matthew, 2.2 million refugees now up from one and a half million just yesterday. The numbers keep going up. Close to half of these refugees are, are in Poland, where you are now. First of all, what's the situation like for them there at the moment? Well, as you can imagine, the situation is still very fast moving. It's still very fluid. Uh, what you have is, is large numbers of people coming to the borders, being processed through the borders. Uh, when they're at the borders, they're being met by uh, first responders, humanitarians who are giving them food, blankets, give them a little bit of time to recuperate. And then they're moving on on primarily buses, in some cases trains as well. They might be going inland a little bit in Poland to other cities. The government has made accommodation available for people. Others are moving on to Europe. They may have contacts there, or even some of them are just gonna gonna try and, and, and go to other countries. So it's a, it's a very dynamic situation. The Polish government is still managing it, but a lot of uh, NGOs and, and humanitarian partners are, are getting involved in that process. Why have so many of the refugees been going into Poland and what other countries are they going into? Well, of course, there's a very long border with Poland. Um, there are ties with the country. There's a large Ukrainian uh, diaspora here. So that's one reason. Uh, but of course, it's not just Poland. Uh, Moldova, Moldova, which is not part of the EU, has taken a significant number. Uh, and there, the, the reception and accommodation has been a little bit different to what we've seen here. But also, of course, significant numbers to Slovakia, Romania, and Hungary as well. And each of those countries is managing that process, um, but agencies like UNHCR, our UN partners, and other NGOs um, are doing whatever we can, bringing in experts, bringing in supplies, importantly, because it's very cold at the border. Uh, yesterday, I was up at Medica in Poland, and it was really bitingly cold. So you can imagine overnight um, how difficult the conditions are. Some people who are coming in have their own contacts. What about those who know no one in these countries that they are heading into now after they've left their homes? What happens to them? Well, taking the example of Poland, which is also being replicated to a different degree in other countries, uh, the government has made available accommodation. Uh, that could be a in a variety of different forms. Uh, it just sort of depends where people end up, uh, which municipality they go through. Uh, but apartment spaces are being made available. And then uh, for more the medium term, refugees will be able to integrate into the system. So they will be offered primary services like, for example, education, healthcare, uh, the potential for um, welfare support. Uh, we're planning to come in and supplement that and also to provide uh, cash assistance and other forms of assistance uh, where it's most needed. That would be for the most vulnerable people. Matthew, what do you have to say to criticism that some people have been saying that many countries now are opening their arms perhaps wider to Ukrainian refugees than they did in the past to refugees from other countries, say Syria or, or from Africa? Is that accurate? Well, of course, the, you know, it's true to say that the welcome here has been open arms and overwhelming. And if you compare that to previous crises, yes, it's a different approach. Um, we've consistently said to Europe, but also to other countries, any countries around the world, that the right to asylum is fundamental. And that means anyone who is escaping conflict, uh, persecution, violence, has the right to claim sanctuary, no matter where they come from, uh, no matter what their ethnicity is. So. Yes, it's very positive what we've seen here, uh, but that's not to say that, you know, there weren't criticisms of Europe uh, and its approach to asylum seekers in the past. Matthew, just to wrap up, what can our viewers who are watching today do to help these refugees who are pouring in from Ukraine at the moment? Well, I think at the moment, the main focus is financial. Uh, within the UN system, uh, we made an appeal recently for $1.7 billion. And that's already being funded quite quickly. But there are lots of financial appeals 
within countries, whether it's through UNHCR or whether it's through uh, local or international NGOs. So that's going to be very important. I think for the longer term, when refugees move to different countries and they start to settle there, there's different things that the people can do. There's volunteering, there's working on education, there's translation, um, there's other forms of fundraising, there's advocacy um, and so on. So, so there's lots that people can do, uh, but the initial focus is on those primary needs around uh, humanitarian assistance and that requires money. Matthew, thanks so much for speaking to us there from Warsaw. Matthew Salt Marsh from the UN Refugee Agency, the UNHCR. Thank you.